Welcome back, my friends. Uh, part three of the my notes. Um, I think this is the next section. Um, we're in Isaiah chapter forty-two. We're in Isaiah forty-two, and I'm studying it verse by verse. Um, and I would like uh, to learn more about it, so I'm not, I'm not going super fast through this. Okay, so let's let's pray. Father God, help us to honor you, Lord. And I hope that my friends and family stay safe on their journeys. Lord, help us to be, help me to be humble, and help me to, to be patient. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So, my family is coming from Jakarta to the U.S. to visit me. I'm so excited about it. Um, Alright. So, let's go ahead and, and look at the notes and stuff. And we'll, we'll go in there. All right, here we go. Ooh, this looks like the old the. Ha ha. You're you're seeing the sneak peek. Okay. So my notes. This is part two of my servant notes. Uh, this might be part three of the whole thing together. Uh, okay, so we are specifically studying, and. So the Hebrew word for servant is uh, Ebed or Eved, um, and we would know that by looking at the dots, the Nikud system, the Nikud dot system, and there's a video on it. There's the link. I'll try to fill it up here real quick. And. I'm not going to try to explain everything. Let's see if uh, it's right there on that link. Let's see right there. So, yeah. There's the link. Maybe I'll put it in the description. Okay. So, there's... Basically, to get this sound, you have to have a guttural... Of the head or something like that um, at least I think that's what you have to do <laughs> uh, there are nine different Hebrew words for the root word servant you know I'm just gonna go over this real quick um, all right so there are, uh, so there's different root words or lexicon in in the um, blue letter bible about the word servant and i didn't look them all up i just saw like two or three that i, I investigated one is eved abed abed that's that's another one is um go goel i think and another there's another one and all of this to try to get some number to line up it didn't work <laughs> okay so that's uh so basically this is it by the way the the alphabet in Hebrew doesn't just have the letters uh, and the dots and stuff were to get to get the uh, what do you call it the vowels to include the vowels so you can know uh, because I in is a silent letter anyway so there's two silent letters that I found about so the first one is um, Alif Alif is a silent and you can change Alif and affecting the other letter next to it. Um, 
so it will become not silent uh, by using this uh, Niku dot system and that's and the lady was showing you showing me how to uh, do it and so it also has a numeric system the letters also have a numeric value they go from 1 to 10 and then they go 10, uh, 10 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80. Um, I think they go, then they go to 100, 200, 300, 400, and 400 is the top. So, Aleph Tav, Tav is 400, Aleph is 1, um, 1, 401. Yeah, it would equal to 401. And I don't know what that sequence does 401 how awesome it is but i noticed that it's in all of tav is in the first um it's in the first uh verse of the bible and it kind of delineates you know it's kind of like look at me no just kidding if there's a couple videos i saw of that the Aleph Tav the first and the last and you see that in the next chapter uh, and maybe even in this chapter the uh, the Aleph Tav might show up I, I don't have really look for it uh, okay so there's also the Aramaic version for servant and you can see that and I'm not going to go to these uh, uh, verses because I think it's gonna take too long. Um, there's a Daniel two four. Uh, how come I have it twice? I don't know. Maybe there's a three four or something. Let me show you. Okay. So there's Daniel 2, 4, 3, 4, or skip the other 2, 4. I should have deleted it. 3, 28, 6, 21, and then Daniel 3, 26. There's uh, this one where Nebuchadnezzar says this, right? And it's so cool. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of a burning fire, fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Wow. Come forth and come hither. Come come forward and right now. And Sh then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. Wow. See, they didn't... St uh, they didn't bow their their uh, knees to the music, you know. They, they didn't bow their knees to the king, even the king, because only God is worthy to be bowed down to. Only God is the one that's worthy. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess uh, that, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That's uh, Philippians 2, 9, and 10, I think. Uh, if you want, we can look at that. So, let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Okay, so, aha! <laughs> so, let's see. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things of the earth and the things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Wherefore, as my beloved, oh, this is something that is said he, that God, uh, Jesus is God's beloved, or God is the beloved of. <laughs> well, 
We'll get to that. All right. Let's look at the notes. All right, so... So this Nikud system allows you to see the the letter patterns too. Uh, I mean, it allows you to change the the word that has no. Uh, it doesn't have a sound to something that would have a sound, or something that normally had a sound. Let's say, for example, the bait letter bait. The only way you can get the letter uh, bait to be baked is if it has the dagish. If it doesn't have the dagish, this little dot in the center, um, and it kind of looks like that. I don't know. Here. I didn't make a... I should have drew something that... So it's like like this. And then there's a dot. If there's no dot in the, in the center, yeah, then you... You get weight, weight, um, and that that's how it is. So, and that's how it changes the system. Uh, the that's what it's for to get the A E I O U type of sounds. So you you get uh, you don't just get all twenty two letters being consonants. You can change it up to be an actual language. That's how it kind of works. That's how I understand it. Um, let's go back to the notes. Okay, so if you take certain uh, the the numbers that each of these letters add up to be, and then add them up, for example, um, for example. The, Ahead, ahead is uh, that adds up to seventy six. So seventy plus uh, two plus four. So that's I n equals uh, seventy. Uh, weight or uh, equals two, and then dalit equals six, and then seventy six. So just keep that number seventy six. So I keep plugging in different uh, meanings for the word servant like golim and that one is going to be equal to 73 and that still doesn't equal to it equals to 149 that's the closest i got and then i put in another one and then that didn't equal that equal to different the closest one i got was the that one or or this one which was avatha and i don't even know what that means i know it's just another word um Sorry, this was like a way wormhole. This took me so long. Uh, and the only word that would work is something I thought of. It's it's not. I don't think it's in the Hebrew language. It's basically nun, uh, and then the final something. Nun dalit. That's what it was. So Nun Dalit, if Nun Dalit uh, and the final version of Nun is like a longer, elongated uh, stick <laughs> with the, uh, and okay, so the word behold is the closest thing I thought of that might equal this word. And that word behold is in the first word in Isaiah 42. One. So let me show you. I think I have to scroll up here so you can see all this. Uh, okay, so this this word occurs seven times. Uh, behold, in the Bible, and then I was thinking, okay, so then that was wrong. <laughs> so let me look at the Greek, and I think we're going to look at the Greek next time, but not as much as I thought I was going to. Because it's not a lot different. There is a word here. Let's go look at it real quick here. This word here. This word is Jacob. And we'll look at what that might mean later at the next episode.
Okay. Oh. Okay, so. So, yes, my servant has to do with the Messiah. But he, it's also a true uh, worshiper. A true worshiper is one that is willing to lay down their life for the truth. Um, and the truth is something valuable that it's even more valuable than rubies. It's even more valuable than gold because gold will canker. Gold will go bad eventually. The Even the melt, the earth will melt. And so you have to hold on to things that have value. For example, biblical worldview. Uh, that will never canker. Uh, holding on to the lovely things, the kind things, the gentle things. Uh, I know this sounds stupid, but one of my first puppies uh, that I loved, and I loved her softness and gentleness. And those are things that, that aren't going to go away in your mind, I think. And not only that, but things that you could stand for, that you're willing to live uh, for even though while being persecuted. That, yes, Jesus said that, you know, bad things happen to good people. Even good people suffer through things. But while you're suffering through these things, you have a God that will fight for you. That he will never leave you. That he will never forsake you. And then you should be able to live in that truth for him. Even though you might be persecuted. That you're different than other people. That you... You can uh, have joy in your heart, even though you might be suffering through difficult times. And other people will see that. Willing to make a stand for uh, even the truth. Now, this is the Mordecai uh, one, where Mordecai, he doesn't stand when everyone, he doesn't uh, bow down when everyone bows down to give Mordecai his due. Because he got promoted and he was so happy. But this man was... I think he was like a dog. Just like Doeg in in the... I forgot what this, that man was responsible for killing many priests in cold blood. And the same thing. This man wanted to kill all the Jews... Just because of one man not willing to to lay down for him. He wanted to kill all the Jews just because of that small thing. And this, he was descended from the Amalekites. The Amalekites, uh, they were an evil people that God wanted to. Uh, that God wanted Saul, uh, Saul to to kill them all, and God told the prophet, and the prophet told Saul to do it, and he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He wasn't willing to make a stand for the things God told him to do, and because of that, you know, his kingdom was ripped from him. Yeah. Because of that, his kingdom was ripped from him, and he he lost his kingdom eventually. And then he lost contact contact with God. So if you don't make a stand for God, then you you can lose God. Yeah. So that is basically the extent of the notes that I have. Uh. I hope you like it, and I hope you have a great day.